Hey, what's up? Now when we put our tasks, we will see them, but when we, re when we refresh, they won't be here anymore. Uh, a good way to think about this, uh, everything we create using JavaScript or the web page itself, this web page will be loaded into the memory and each thing we add to it in any way, it will be also added to the memory. But when we refresh it, the, the browser will request this web page and it will be loaded from the start. So the stuff that have been loaded into the memory from the previous run won't be exist anymore because it will be like, you can think about it like restarting the whole web page again, the whole application. Um, so yeah, think about it like restarting the whole thing again. So these things have been created in the runtime when we actually loaded the page and started using it. When we refresh it, this will be restarted, so nothing in the memory right now, unless uh, the basic stuff that we defined here and here. So to make this work, this is actually why, or one of the reasons why people use the backend code, if you think about it, or you can think about it like this. In backend code, we will send these tasks to the backend, and the backend will store them in a database. And a database is like, you can think about, if you don't know about databases, you can think about them like an Excel sheet. Uh, most of them are similar to that. So the backend code will store them there. And each time you load the page, it will be loaded with these tasks. So you'll display them. So that's why how this is how people store this kind of data. But so when you refresh, it will be there always. But in our case, this is like for beginners. So what I will do, there is some databases built in in the browsers. In the in, yeah, in the browsers, uh, if you go to inspect, go to application tab, and you can actually see here. Go to the local storage, and click here. This is one of the databases that exists. Let me clear it. It's a key value database, which means each key is a string that points to another string. This is how key value databases works. And we have one in the browser called local storage. We have another one called IndexedDB. This is a NoSQL database. You don't need to worry about it. And we have a WebSQL database. This is similar to um, Excel Sheets. You can think about it like this. But we will be using this one. It's the most simple one. It's really easy to use. Let me show you. So local storage dot set item. And this accepts two things. The first thing is the string. This is the key. Each time we will get the data from the database we will use the same key we started we, we started with okay so i will call this name and the value will be my name to what so let's go to application you will see that name points through what which is nice so now local storage dot set item and this page will be 22 as you can see now let's try to get one of these so local storage dot get item we need to pass the name so if you the key sorry if you pass something that does not exist null will be retained if you pass name we have rewards this pass edge look at this we actually stored it as a number but something very important to notice we got a string returned from the get item Everything stored in the local storage, every value here is also a string, always. And actually the set item, it will convert these to unto, to into a string when you pass them. So uh, something that very common will happen with the, new, with the new people when they try to store an object. So let's try to store an object. Uh, I'll show you two things now. Let's store an object have this property name equal to what? No errors, but let's go to application tab. First thing, our previous name have been overridden. So if you if you try to store item with the same key, the first one will be deleted. Okay. The second thing is this is not the object. This is like let me just grab it for you. So we have this string that is called object object in JavaScript. Objects when you call to string on them they will be converted like this you can override this but this is the default way uh, in arrays if I have an array they will and call to string they will be converted like this 
So I don't I, I, I actually don't like to do it this way to store them as a strings in our uh, sorry I don't like to depend on the dot to string function to store our objects as you can see in the in the normal object case it will destroy it this is not the previous object in our array it will put put it like this but a good way is to use a function called stringify it exists inside a global object called JSON dot put then it's then it's called stringify okay now pass to it anything so uh, name what it will return a string that represents that object okay so let's try to do it like this so let's store an, this object like this let's go to application you'll see it's, uh, it's stored like this but let's try and grab it it will be a string that represents that object now to convert the strings into JavaScript objects we need to use the parse function from the same JSON object and this pass to it the return value from this one so now it's returned to an object so stringify converts uh, JavaScript objects into JSON so JSON strings so we, we will be storing uh, a string that is formatted in a specific way it's called JSON and this is actually what this does it will modify these normal objects to look like JSON parse will return it from JSON the string JSON to normal, normal JavaScript object let's now yeah into normal JavaScript object let's now try to do it with arrays as you can see we got the array let's look at how this was stored just a normal string we can actually just get that item like this it's just a string so yeah that's actually the way to the way that you should store objects or actually anything uh, yeah any object in uh, the local storage which is which exists in our uh, application so let's try to do it when we create we should store this in our application okay so let me clear it and let's go to our code and we create insert task into page we do it here and now empty it before emptying it let's store it so const store into db oh you know something i think i forgot to commit these changes did i create yeah i forgot my bad so let's do it now so get we have two changes yeah so get add get commit message uh, style the tasks get push origin yeah my bad style the task pretty sure you noticed this and let's go here I already closed this one because I already know I did something good and this now create a pull request and approve it merge it new pull request from the new the start the tasks yeah from there and just that's it created assign myself and labels will be enhancement and it's for this for this Okay, now we need to merge it with master. Now I'll delete the branch. Now remember, what I will do, I will return get check out to master. Now I need to pull everything from master. Get pull uh, origin master. Uh, network issue. Look, this will just change. Ah, as you can see, this means everything is fine. Now I will create a new branch based on the current state of the master branch. That's why I need to pull. So get a branch. I will call it save tasks into local storage. Get check out to that branch. Check out save task into local plan into local storage 
so very nice so let's continue now we need to save them before emptying the input text so I'll create a function at the end called const save task so local storage dot save or sorry dot set item this is the key and this will be an array so we will be we will be having an array of tasks the key would of them will be always tasks and we will have the text of the array like this and let's call this one here let's format it okay let's go and test it let's inspect go to application So it's saving only one of them, right? The last one we add, always add. Because if you think about it, I am, yeah. If I converted a single element into two string using arrays, it will be converted just a string like this. So I need to actually do the JSON dot stringify for that. Plus, there's actually some things I need to show you as well. So each time we do it, this key value will be overridden with the new stuff, and it's always the same. Or it's always an array of the same uh, of the current content we added. As you can see, this is the last one. This is the one that exists here. But if you think about it, what we need to do is to merge the original saved tasks with the new one. So this might be a little bit complex. So what I will do, so const tasks, I will get the original save tasks. So local storage dot set i or oh, sorry get item. It's the same task. It's the same key, right? And let's just parse this into JavaScript array. So parse. So this will be an array. So I will push to it the new text. And what I will save, I will save now the tasks in using the stringify function. So let's go and test this. This should work now. So as you can see, it's empty. Uh, or sorry, it's not empty. We have this array like this as a string. So as you can see, it now works. It's always adding the last text as uh, at the end of this array. So this is actually nice. But let's try to clear it and check. Now let's check now and let me refresh. So as you can see we have an error. Can't read property push of null. Let's try to do let's try to debug this. So our local storage is empty. So let's try to do the same thing here. So we will get the item tasks from the from the local storage, but remember it's empty. So this, if you remember, will return null. So tasks are null. So we need to handle this case. If task three equals to null, what you need to do is to stringify just the text like this to add that's the first one. Else, do what we used to do here. Let me format it. So if we don't have tasks, just put a single array with the current task. If we have tasks, push it. Push the current text and stringify it and store it again so yeah now this will work it's the local storage is empty now so now i'll put one as you can see now two uh three four and so on so this now works the only thing we need to do now is uh, to load them as the start of the application to load these and display them before the user can do anything so I think that's it for now. I will wait for these noises to, to go away. Uh, this might be a little bit hard to understand at the first time, but my recommendation is to try these cases step by step, trace it, or uh, maybe on a pencil and paper. This is how we usually understand these kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, thank you.